Let me bring you songs from the wood to make you feel much better than you could know. Good morning. This is Linda. And we have three days left until we boycott this corporation of America. And then after that, I think we should set our goals higher and do some more things. And we should also, because I see we're going into another world war, and to the Native American, this would be World War IV. Um, but this is about the Constitution and the Confederacy of the Iroquois, and that's where the Constitution came from. But the, the men, Ben Franklin, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson, who visited with the Six Nations and the Confederacy of the Iroquois um, to get their ideas, and they pretty much based the whole Constitution on that, but they left, off, left out the greatest part, which would stop the wars. And, and that was the balance of power, and the balance of power of the female. We have a role, and it's not just a biological role. So I'm going to try to do this really briefly, and it's a very long blog, so I'm just going to go to little bits and pieces, and I will leave the link, because the woman, a Mohawk woman who did write this, from her heart, she wrote the truth, and it, 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 it humbled me, it made me cry, because I've known about this my whole life, and um, I'm going to read some of it to you real, real quick, and I love you all. Um, the eagle atop the tree of peace is screaming a warning, a.k.a. the feminine fire inside. The feminine fire inside is trying to come out. And we need to reestablish that contact of getting us balanced. So, <clears throat> the eagle sits on top of the tree of peace and screams when danger is coming. This image, the tree of peace, was adopted as a tree of liberty as was the eagle into the national symbols. Um, the great law of peace. The Confederacy arose centuries ago among separate warring communities as a way to create harmony, unity, respect among human beings. Implicit in Iroquois political philosophy is commitment to the highest principles of human liberty Iroquois laws, recognition of individual liberty and justice surpasses any European parallel. The great law of peace includes freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the right of women to participate in government, separation of power in the government, and checks and balances within the government are traceable to the Iroquois Constitution, ideas learned by the colonists. Um, and the central idea underlying the Iroquois' political philosophy is that peace is the will of the Creator and the ultimate spiritual goal and natural order among humans. The principles of the Iroquois government embodied the great law of peace, was transmit, transmitted by a historical figure called the Peacemaker. His teachings emphasized the power, reason to assure righteousness, justice, health among humans, Peace came to the Iroquois, not through war and conquest, but through the ex exercise, reason, guided by spiritual mind. The Iroquois League is based not on a force of arms or of rule of law, but spiritual concepts of natural law applied to human society. Now, I'm going to go down here and tell you what they left out. Why did the Founding Fathers choose to keep secret the original design of the United States government? One clue may be related to a major difference between the Iroquoian versus U.S. judicial branches. The Iroquoian Supreme Court was entrusted to the women, clan mothers, women's council, maintained a balance of power in the matrilineal society. Women nominated chief statesmen as political and religious leaders leading a maternal insight into good leadership qualities. Their standards were set very high, while under the U.S. Constitution, qualifications of congressmen were limited to age, citizenship, residency. Iroquoian women, moreover, required all chief statements of the five nations must be honest in all things. They must not idle or gossip, but be men possessing those honorable qualities, their hearts shall be full of peace and goodwill, and their minds filled with a yearning for the welfare of the people of the Confederacy. 
women also had the power to impeach any leader who failed, and after three warnings, to serve the best interest of the people. So, they could impeach. Three warnings, they were gone. They would get someone else. The role of women. Clan mothers choose candidates who are male for political leaders. The women maintain ownership of the land and homes and exercise veto power over any council action that may result in war. The women can also impeach and expel any leader who conducts himself improperly or loses the confidence of the electorate. Then the women will choose a new leader. Well, now we are female in a foreign land. And I'm sure all females know within their heart what's going on. Um, like I said, this article is very long, and I'm, I'm just going to leave it because it is just bravo. It is one of the best articles I have ever, ever read on how the Constitution came to be and why they left out the feminine side. The reason? We would not be a feudal state. We would not be an imperialistic feudal system. We would have been balanced. Can you imagine right now? There would be no wars with Syria. All we needed was balance. And they left that out. And that's very sad. And it is sad. From my heart it's sad. So after we get through with these people, and we will... They, they eventually will fall, as empires do. Maybe our next constitution should follow that of the Iroquois Confederacy, where there is a balance for peace, for humanity, for love, for truth, for honesty, for everyone. Peace, truth, and love. And remember, three days left, and we boycott this stupid system. I don't even want to go into the politics of it. Because actually politics means a professional liar. So when you see them up there year after year and being reelected, you know it's rigged. They're professional liars. What do you expect? Do you expect anything different than distractions? I don't. I love you all. And I'm out.